Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a fan of first-person shooters, whether that be battle royales, extraction shooters, or arena shooters, then if you feel anything like me, I can confidently say that we are all in desperate need of something new. And I do believe, based on everything that I've seen and what I've been following, that a new era of first-person shooters is coming. If you follow gaming news or games in general, then you've probably seen the emergence of a few new titles that are in the works that are mixing things up a bit and bringing new things to the table as far as how we approach the first person shooter experience. Before we dive into those games and what they are though, why are we dissatisfied with what's going on right now? Well, again, we have been playing Call of Duty and I've talked about this in other videos, Call of Duty Warzone specifically for the last three to five years now, We've been playing Apex Legends for 22 seasons, going on 23. We've been playing Fortnite. We've been playing PUBG. We have been playing the same staples in gaming for the last handful of years at least. Five plus years. Now that's not to say that these games have not been updated, they haven't been maintained, they haven't been kept up with. They've certainly delivered us new content, new heroes to play, new weapons, new metas, the list goes on and on. However, and I talk about this a lot in other videos, especially live streams, the overall loop of the game, the gameplay loop, the bones of the game itself are the same. For all intent and purpose, they're the same. Apex is the same game that it was in Season 10. It's going to be the same game that it is in Season 30 or 35, however long that game continues to go. It's the same with Call of Duty. Call of Duty has been the same since the original Warzone, right? Blackout was really the only I guess different type of game that we got from the Call of Duty series that introduced us to what a battle royale from that series could be like. But since Warzone released its very first iteration, it has been largely the same. And the overall gameplay loop of Call of Duty in general has been largely the same. Everyone knows what Fortnite is. If you're 10 and below, then uh, you know that game just is what it is. I love what Fortnite does with the game. They, they're such a big, such a popular game. They have so many licensing deals with all these major companies and people and on and on and on brands they can do whatever they want to the game at any point in time and people will eat it up fortnite truly is a, a, a rare gem in the gaming space as far as its ability to expand and to adapt with little backlash now i want to bring it forward a little bit to what the common misconception or misperception that i have that you probably have that a lot of us have and what's going to save us from the games that we're currently playing and that being that the call of duty season 5 season 6 season 7 on and on and on and on and on battlefield's new release apex's new season just one more season just one more season is going to be what saves us and i'm here to tell you that i just simply don't believe that it is. I don't believe that it's that simple anymore. And the reason is because, back to my first and original point, the loop of the game doesn't change. The way that we play the game and the reward that we are given for playing the game well has not changed. And to me, in my mind, especially based on what I'm seeing now in development, that's just not going to cut it anymore. Gamers, at least in my demographic and age group, are looking for something that provides them with more depth with something that's fleshed out in such a way that they're playing it not only for a quick relaxing kickback just enjoying sort of getting a kill here and there dropping a streak whatever it may be but actually being able to dive into an expansive and deep environment world marketplace character whatever so that they feel attached to the game and that there's a reason for the game to have longevity past the first 10 20 30 hours so what I'm saying is is that that Call of Duty as it stands, Battlefield as it stands, Apex as it stands, PUBG, the list goes on and on, is not going to cut it for another five years, seven years. It just isn't. It's not a deep, well-rounded enough, or I should say expansive enough, gameplay loop to keep people coming back simply to explore new skins or new guns or new terrains to fight on. It just simply isn't. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this does bring me to my final point and what I believe the fix 
looks like and what I believe the fix is actually pretty close to being. Now, we've got Arena Breakout, Infinite, the PC built version of the wildly popular mobile game. We have Grey Zone Warfare and Grey Zone Warfare does have a lot of potential. However, I still just cannot get behind the game. It's virtually unplayable for me. A lot of people have had success playing it and that's great. That's not entirely the point. The point is the vision of the game. Escape from Tarkov has gone through a little bit of a revitalization over the last few months. And now we've got games like Delta Force, Hawk Ops. We've got games like Level Zero, a space-esque, sort of dead spacey, sci-fi-esque looter shooter where you get to play as the enemy and as a PMC. Now, without going into too much detail about what each one of these games brings to the table, the overall point is that there's a pattern here. There's an emergence of a gameplay loop that I'm very excited to see, a pattern of gameplay experience that I'm very excited to be a part of. And what is that pattern? Well, that pattern is not only are we dropping into a map, whether that's multiplayer, extraction, whatever, we're dropping into a game or games that have thought about how they can expand their overall gameplay loop. Now, we saw this with Warzone trying to introduce DMZ. It really didn't go anywhere, largely a failure. No one ever talked about it uh, after the initial sort of release of the game, but that's the idea, right? What can we do? What can we bring to our game to introduce a loop of gameplay that's deeper, more well-rounded, and has legs, long legs, right? For all my horror movie fans out there, that has longevity. And that's what we're seeing in games like Arena Breakout, Delta Force, Hawk Ops, Tarkov's having a little bit of a surge, Level Zero, Grey Zone Warfare. Not only are they mimicking and are they imitating one another, and again, I want to be clear, there does not have to be a killer of one game or the other. There's nothing wrong with mimicking and imitating. That's what the industry desperately needs right now in the first person shooter space. We desperately need that. We need to be forcing the companies, forcing the devs to implement and experiment and push what's been done further. So there's nothing wrong with that. We cannot continue to play Call of Duty and Battlefield for the next 10 years. It just isn't going to work. Arena Breakout is taking the Tarkov formula and simplifying it, making it a little bit more accessible for newcomers. And honestly, it's just more well optimized. It's not quite as deep and intricate as Tarkov, which is fine. That's what Tarkov exists for, to be the true hardcore extraction shooter that those types of players want. And then you have Grey Zone Warfare, sort of doing the same thing, similar looter shooter, you know, hardcore military. You've got the inventory menu, the character and the health management, really awesome environment, int uh, entrance, and exiting type of system there. But Grey Zone Warfare's problem is that the game just doesn't run. Terrific vision, but the game just doesn't run. And now you have Tarkov Battlestate Games seeing these types of things emerge. So they're saying, hey, oh shit, we need to do something about our game. Maybe we need to take back all the bullshit that we introduced with the Unheard of Edition and give players what we promised them originally. Tune up the game, uh, you know, fuck with the maps, yada, 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 on and on and on. And that's what we're seeing. It's being pushed forward. You've got games like Level Zero. It's an indie title, right? Probably not very popular. You never really heard of it, but they're introducing something unique into the space. You know, you've got that looter shooter aspect. You've got that sort of arcadey Call of Duty style gameplay, but you also have an ability that a lot of games aren't introducing right now, which is to play as an enemy, an alien, you know, this xenomorphic type of enemy, kind of like you would think maybe Day by Dead, uh, Dead by Daylight rather, where you're playing as the enemy and you're hunting the PMCs. So these types of things are what we need. Delta Force Hawk Ops, Closed Alpha, looks great, looks like it runs really well. They're introducing what a lot of people will probably start to compare to a battlefield takeover. We've got Conquest, we've got multiplayer, a large open world, aerial combat, naval combat, ATVs, infantry on the ground, we've got all this stuff going on, boom, 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 it's happening all over the place. We love it, it's fast paced, it's action packed, it's dynamic. The reason that everyone loves 
the battlefield. Hold the phone, though. Now we've also got a, a, a hazard zone experience, hazard operations, the classic looter shooter type of experience. But what they've done is they've combined that with all the management of the in inventory and the health with a more arcadey style of combat like Call of Duty, like Battlefield, even with a little bit of mix with player and character abilities, not to the degree of like an Apex Legends, but similar to how a Call of Duty perk system might work where you, you know, inject something or you've got some boots on that make you run faster. Now that will have to be balanced out, right? That's got to be balanced. But the point is a new era of shooter is coming. If you follow gaming, if you follow gaming news, if you follow what's in development, companies are starting to realize, thank God, that the formula and the loop of what has been working for the last seven to 10 years is not going to continue to work. It just isn't. We're not going to get any more out of an Apex Legends season, nor a Call of Duty Warzone season. This formula has to change. These games are not going to save us. Now, I'm not necessarily against a live service model. I get it. Make a game, run with it for a while, update the shit out of it. Bring us the content. We'll eat it up. We'll eat it up. But we've got to have developers doing what we're seeing now with these types of games. Arena, Delta Force, hopefully the new Battlefield, hopefully the new Black Ops 6, Grey Zone, Tarkov, where we're taking the better parts of these feature sets and we're mimicking them and we're expanding expanding upon them so that the game has more depth, more reason to play it for a longer period of time. We're not just jumping in to experience brain rot or go through the same hardcore battle royale grind only to be told at the end of the game, congratulations, you won and that's it. But we're invested in our character. We're invested in the growth of our character in this world, his gear. How is the world evolving? How is the gameplay evolving across all of these different modes that they provide us? How are they linking together? This is what's going to make game especially in the first-person shooter space and as a live service, really blow up into the next iteration, the next genre-defining era of gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the video. Stick around and dig through the archive of what we got here. Plenty of content about first-person shooters, reviews, gameplay videos. We're live three days a week here and on Twitch. Would love to have you be a, a part of the community. This is the type of thing that we like to engage in. This is the type of thing that we like to talk about. So throw a like on the video. It helps a ton. Please drop into a live stream. Would love to have you. Check out this video right here if you want to know my thoughts on being a streamer, being a content creator, and how I feel there is a lot of misconception of what that is. I'll see you guys online live and in the next video.